Greetings from Seoul, Korea. Welcome back, guys. Uh, we're here at the GSL. We just saw uh, Ensnare dominate and Jinro dominate. Now we got to see uh, if Hydra right now, he's the one who's on the ropes. He's hanging on by a thread. Yeah. we got to see if he can come back. He has to beat Ensnare in order to even stay in this group. Yeah. Otherwise, he's the first one to go out. That's right. Uh, going 0-2 right away. It's a good chance to get last. You might get third. But you and then he would have to go to the up-down yeah. uh, phase of the tournament. Yeah. And that's going to be quite hard. There's some good yeah. players in Code A coming up. We'll have to see, though, Tasteless. And Snare is definitely a player I just capable of beating, but Snare showed the best way I've ever seen him play. I mean, Even, was play I think yeah. if had Idra gotten those the, the group of drones to the expansion, the game might have looked different, or at least the game would have gone on longer. Yeah. Um, but, man. Yeah, it's a hard map to get a fourth on when it, the Terran has well, a third. When, when you look at three base versus three base, it's like, where is the Zerg supposed to actually get a fourth base? Are they supposed to get it on the other side of the Planetary Fortress? I mean, is it... They're supposed to have to go around it, or they have to get it right next to the Planetary Fortress. Yeah, I know. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's tough. Uh, hard map against such a great player like Jinro. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Jinro played very well, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Now, in Snare, I'm actually a little bit scared for a little nerd tasteless because in Snare, in our last game, looked so superb. And here's oh, the funny yeah. thing. He got the round of four in Season 1, and Season 2 got round of 16. Yeah. But if you compare how good he looked back in those rounds, even when he got top four... If you look at how good he was compared to the other players, I feel like he looks better now compared to the other players than he did back then when I know. he even got round of four. He actually, we didn't really get to see him in season three. He looked superb in the first game. That Just was like, pretty oh, impressive. Oh, wow. Okay, this is how you play Terran. All right. Now we got Nada, Jiro, and We haven't really seen him pushing, right. uh, pushing through that gully and then going around to the uh, to the upper section. I haven't seen him. the third it. base. I was like, oh, well, this is just really good. Yeah, no, it was. And he's expanding while he's doing it, too, yeah. in a safe location that he can go back to and defend. So, uh, exactly. I'm a little bit worried. Uh, Zelda Caverns, though, is a little bit more of a conventional map. It is. We've s we've seen it a lot. Um, and we've seen a lot of different strategies. I'm sure I've just played, played on it a lot more mm. than Chikuras uh, with Czech Prime. Yeah. But we don't know for sure. We're going to see. Yeah. Uh, you know, Zelnaga, there are some things about it that make it a little bit hard for a Zerg player going on it. Um, Big open Very wide open natural. Yeah. Hellion openings, very fast reactor heli openings are so scary on this map because spine crawlers don't really do very much here. No. They're just, there's too much room to cover. In fact, if you go the quickest, like, gas before barracks or whatever, the really, really quick reactor hellion build, and your opponent goes for zerging speed first, that is, that is the bad end of a build order, Tasteless, and uh, that can be quite hard. Yeah. We're going to zoom in uh, on our players now, these two guys. And uh, take a look at the maps. It is Zelnaga Caverns. You can see Ensnare eliminated Scrap Station. Complicated map to play on. Probably didn't want to practice on it. Uh, Hydra eliminating Delta Quadrant. Yep. Good choices, both. Uh, Zelnaga Caverns. Well, we were just talking about that, so we'll let that one go. This is I, a map that's never really eliminated. Yeah, never. Everybody's coming like the less, uh, lesser of all evils, basically. Yeah. Um, I want to see what build order uh, Ensnare is actually going to use here. Yeah, I am that so is the curious. most interesting part of this whole thing for me. Is what is the build order that you want to use in snare? We will see. In snare, both players are ready. I'm, I'm ready. Are you ready, Artosis? Jesus, I am so ready. I'm a little bit nervous. I want to go, but we're going. the countdown started. So get ready for some TVZ action here on Zelnaga Caverns. Code S. This is the GSL. We're in the final group today. And after that, we're going to know who the 16 players are. They're going to be moving on in Code S. The rest go to the up-down matches. In the red, we have our Terran player winning the first game in his Code S group. Can he win the second and finalize this? I certainly hope not, Tasis. <laughs> now to our Zerg player. He's down one game. He has to come back and win this. He is... Now, Hydra is much more clutch uh, than Rackasaurus most. Rex. I love this, this yeah, meme that's, awesome. that's gone around. Uh, 
Aydra is much more uh, clutch than most other players. Ooh, and we have a pause, pause here. Please pause. Something's wrong. Something's going on. We're going to find out as soon as possible and let you guys know what happened. We do allow we do allow the players to pause the games if um, something happens. This is the part where I give my speech about one of the things about esports is the vehicle is technology. Yes, and, please uh, tell us. Well, you know, sometimes technology breaks down. And, uh, you know, when that kind of stuff here's, happens. Here's... You, you, normally when you give that speech, you say something about, you know, this is a, a futuristic one, you know, it's, it is technology, the vehicle is technology, and so yeah. sometimes it breaks down. Here's a good way to look at it. Go. Sometimes you're watching a baseball game or a football game and it starts to rain. Sometimes the monitor turns off. Same type of deal. Yep. So he's having some mouse problems, we've just been informed. Um, I hope it's not an infestation. Ooh, it's his a mouse has got ensnared. It's all slow now. He's like, oh, it feels like I'm dragging. I was actually mouse. talking more like actual mice in his booth. They're like running. I was like, well, I'm scared of mice. He like stands on his chair. He's like an elephant. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we're going to have to sit tight here for a little bit. We can't make no, it snare. Elephants aren't actually afraid of mice. Is that actually not true? Of course I not. guess it wouldn't make it's any an sense. an elephant. There's like all these like little animals and stuff in, in the... You've been to Thailand. You've seen elephants. Yeah, I've ridden They're on elephants. They're big, man. Me too. Yeah, They're crazy. big. It's pretty crazy. Um, by the way, a Those lot of people... Those things could kill you. Yeah, they could. Of course they could. Oh, yeah, man. The, el the uh, alligator. The elephant. Elephant that I was riding wanted to kill me. Wanted my blood taste. So really? I could, I could it sense it. It was like, it. like trying to it grab trying stuff. To. Like, I was battling it. I was like, I had this joke because you know the opening ceremonies for so many esports events are so over the top that I just want to have have the scene of, and now for the Counter Strike tournament, it's Counter Strike players actually playing Counter Strike on the backs of elephants. <laughs> you guys like trying to aim his up, and there's like this elephant like trying to pull him up. And he's like, oh god, like <laughs> makes no sense. Because no, because like those some of the opening ceremonies for some of these esports events no, are like, so I, extreme. Like they are extreme, tasteless. So that's the next step. Yeah. Uh, is to do something like that. Um, now, we're just waiting for him to get the mouse settings. I don't believe we're actually going to restart the game. I don't know what would necessitate that. No. Yeah. We're going to continue the game, in fact. And the problem is fixed. All right. Uh, I've been informed. So, guys, sit tight. Uh, they're just going to double check with Greg, Hydra, uh, and just make sure that everything is okay. It's like, are you, are you ready? Are yeah. there any problems for you? You know, you want a cup of water? Maybe a little shoulder shoulder rub, you know? Get some of those kinks out. Yeah. No, no. I don't know what the ref does. Just kind of, you know, <laughs> painting an interesting picture. Here All right, we go. We get the game started, so let's get ready for some more uh, TVZ action. Let's see if Eider can even get out of this group. Um, uh oh. So we can. We have to go back to the game. Oh. All right. We're going to cue the game machine for you guys and, and uh, get back in this. Tasteless. Remember that build I was talking about? Uh, the tasteless build? <laughs> No, not the taste. That's build. all I know, Artosis. The fastest reactor Hellion where you get the refinery before the barracks. Guess oh, what's he's going to do that. Now, here's the thing. Will Hydra hatch first? Actually, it looks like he's going to. Oh, yes. Because if you go spawning pool first against this, yeah. it is so bad. <laughs> it, no, it's like... You it actually, is terribly So, I, I actually didn't catch the Terrence... Uh, Build right up. He went refinery before barracks. This is yes. the build we saw TLO do. Yes, it's the very fastest you can get reactor Italians basically with a reasonable economy. Uh, you just get that gas very fast. So as soon as the barracks finishes, you start up the factory, then you make a reactor on your barracks ASAP after a marine. And then you just have reactor Italians very, very fast. Now, Hydra hopefully will see this coming in plenty of time to go for uh, not speedlings but roaches speedlings are not very good against a billion jillion hellions yeah well i mean the problem with links is that as they attack you they can line up very easily uh now the drone is going to spot this Whoop. yeah he's going to see exact he's going to know exactly what the build is i was actually talking specifically about this build today i just sitting there looking at going newbie <laughs> so we're going to probably see a roach warren instantaneously there it is roach yep. warren there it is tasteless there Throwing it is up his first queen I would not be surprised if he sits actually on one queen for now. And hopefully, hopefully my little nerd will actually make a creep tumor immediately with this queen instead of a larva inject. When you're going roach this fast, you don't have enough drones to actually support a larva inject when you already have two hatches. Whereas the creep tumor will be unbelievably useful 
in actually defending against the Quick Hellions. Both of them controlling their respective um, Zonaga Watchtowers. And it here does. comes the Creep Tumor. Nope. Nope, nope, excuse injected me. injected Larva. Yep. That's okay, though. He is sending his Queen down. He is making another Queen as well. As some Roaches. Now, the trick with this build is that, um, you know, if they were to go Lynx first, I mean, he, it's almost checkmate. Well, yeah, if you just keep on making Hellions, it's like GG. But the Roaches are out. The Hellions look like they are going to be minimized damage-wise. And back at home, Tasteless, in our Terran base. Oh, he's going to one base push, it looks like. No, no, he's making the Command oh, Center. Oh, I didn't see the Command Center. I'm there terrible this game. Uh, but, no, he's he's not going to keep on making Hellions. So he just he shows that, forces Roach... And now he's switching over into a completely different build order. You know, he's already forced he Roach. May, he, he may, may notice that uh, there's not going to be any more Hellions. Yeah, Hydra will notice pretty quickly here. Yeah. In fact, he's going to take a peek here. Yep. Uh, three Roaches. This can actually be quite a good move. Now, the Hellions aren't very good at defending stuff. They're good at attacking and running away. Meanwhile, as you can see, he's just parking those over there at the entrance. So Hydra looking pretty good so far, but a Siege Tank will pop out here. And, and that's going to have to run from him. Make him turn away. Oh, 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 oh. Nice snap there by Roach snare. Neck, man. Took him out. Yeah. So. Do you know the only things that would live through a nuclear blast, Tasteless? Oh, tell me. Not Roaches, because they only have 125 <laughs> points. <laughs> wow. That's true. I thought. I bet you everyone's like, it's the cockroach. I know it's the cockroach. They're like all spamming on the forums. Cockroach trying to be the first one in. No. Cockroach first. Gotcha. It's not it at all. Let's Ooh. In the production oh, tab, wow. we do yeah, see he's actually blue flame. Blue flame. Now, Idra is getting speed for Zerglings, but also making more roaches while getting his lair. So, uh, kind of an interesting uh, turn of events, Tasteless. Certainly so. Getting his third gas. Marines in the tank pushing out now. You know what? What? I think we are actually going to see a really funky timing attack that's gonna be Marines, Blue Flame Aliens, and a Siege Tank. I think I think you're right. Not with a ton of aliens, but with some. Yeah, yeah, it just has the blue flame to really stop. Uh, the question is, is Idra macro right now? Idra's known to macro. He is making a lot of Zerglings right now. He's making some more roaches as well. Roaches are going to be done. very useful against this, whereas Zerglings will not be as useful. And here he goes! Now, once he fires, he's going to reveal that he has Blue Flame. He sees Blue Flame! Very annoying for Hydra. Losing some drones there. That was actually a fake push. That entire push was based off sniping a few drones. And it did its job, Tasteless. Yeah, it did. got four kills so far. And he may just continue to push, just deciding upon how many units he sees, but... Hydra right now has enough Roaches. Roach speed on the way. When Roach speed finishes, he'll have enough to absolutely stop any of these attacks. Bad rally point here from the Terran. Oh, more Hellions coming in. Oh, nice. Having one Roach there frightens the Terran away. Hydra is counterattacking a little bit here while making his Spire. Roach speed about to finish. Two bunkers. Well, almost two. One is on the way. This is actually going to be very oh, interesting. Oh, Roach speed one. is done. Yeah. And he backs up. No. Looks not like he wants to just maybe harass the side with the roaches. Pick off a couple of SCVs if possible. Yeah, that would not be a bad idea at all. And he's going to go ahead and do that at the expansion. And look at that. Very if nice. Ter Terran doesn't have siege mode because of the blue flame upgrade. Yep. So this is going to hurt the Terran's economy. Siege mode almost done now. So Hydra just picking off a little bit too while taking his third base. Very nice. Hydra backs up through the uh, secret hallway. That's a terrible name I just gave it. The secret hallway. <laughs> it's um, not very secret. It's no, it's not. It's actually, it's it. you, you actually already know it. It's, it's a Tasis hallway. He was the first one to discover it. <laughs> he was doing the Tasis build, decided to see if there were any hallways. Tasis hallway. Around. The gold base is the Tasis expansion. You should take that one over the normal expansion. Um, more blue from Hellions moving out. Uh, the cover's blown, though. They do get spotted by taking out these early. Well, they should have taken the secret highway, then. They should have taken the Tasis hallway or whatever. Um, tearing down these rocks, getting yeah. banelings, and uh, uh, look, notice he's upgrading air attack. Yep. You Tell never really want to get carapace unless it's a Zerg or Zerg and you're both committed to mutas. Get one carapace upgrade and then only attack upgrades. Attack upgrades simply better. You don't want to actually.
actually commit to fighting units with mutas, therefore doing damage, therefore you want them to do more damage. Looks like Terran's gonna push out now. He has some marauders with these siege tanks. Terran sieges up. Now, Instair, I think right now, should begin thinking about taking a third base. Yeah, but you know what's strange? His movement seems to indicate he's not interested in taking the gold. Mm. He hasn't been walking around that area. Now that might change, but right now that's what I see. So kind of late turrets, but the mute Marines coming up to help get those uh, mutas out of here. Almost, almost losing one mutalisk there. Don't want to lose any mutalisks in this moment. Mm -hmm. uh, not like there's a moment you want to lose mutalisks, but you know. <laughs> You know. And Snare has popped out a few Marauders, so he was thinking, oh, maybe I'll just hard counter the Roaches and roll you over, but no. I just switching into Mutas at a good timing, making those Marauders a little bit less useful. He is getting the Banelink speed upgrade. Mutalisks are now getting oh, the harassing the expansion of Ensnare with his Mutas right now, trying to take out some Sea oh, Shakes. Does nice take one shot. Out. Yep. Also damaged a few Marauders in there. Hurt their feelings. But it said, you're fat, you're ugly. They said, stop it. Stim, too late. Mutas are out. No, there's not really medevacs here. Yeah. So this, anytime Terran stims, it's like, uh-oh. And Snare is starting to look a little bit all-in-ish, Tasteless. Uh, yeah. No extra command center. No medevacs, as you said, or at least his medevacs are going to be very, very late. Hydra looks like he wants to poke in the side of Ensnare's base. He oh, can nice. Find a place to do some damage. Now, what he really wants is for the Terran to just stim. It's a tough angle. That was a tough choice by him. It was smart, probably smart for him to move out. He could have maybe gotten the refinery, but not worth it. By the way, Terran pushing out now. Uh, I. This he's definitely not going to get a third base. It looks like he was actually yeah. shown no interest in even destroying the rocks. He's probably going to try to do a push from the high ground into Idris third. I think he actually thought that Idris would just take a gold base. Mm. I think he thought Idris would stay on. Uh, oh wow, we just oh, saw nice him there. With no medevacs. Ouch! 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 Um, but no, I think he thought Idris would stay on roaches. That's why he has some marauders and siege tanks. He's thinking, oh, I can just kill those units. But uh, this is looking like it's going to be pretty hard for Ensnare to actually finish Idris off. Hydra going up to four bases. Uh oh, Hellion's gonna. Oh, excuse me. Thought Hellion was gonna slip in there. Go ahead, Artosis. And uh, Hydra right now at 179 supply against 156 of Ensnare. Now, note, Hydra's doing a great job of flying very near these uh, Marines. He wants to bait them into stimming. Yeah. Some medevacs are on the way. Now, this is a really good location oh, to siege stim, up your tanks. Stim. Here we go. And Hydra just gonna run up into the siege tanks. Where are the mutalisks? Oh, mutalisks mutalisk on the side there. And he takes out most of the Marines. It looks That's like it. Hydra's gonna stay alive, Tasteless. All he has to do is kill off these Marines, then everything else will die to the Mutas. And bam. Very nice by Hydra. Taking out the guy who got the, the semifinals of season one. And you can see suddenly, uh, Ensnare tries to flip back into an economic phase. Uh, he's going to try to make a command center. He is not taking out the gold rock. It's too rocks, little, too late, was, Tasteless. It was total uh, myopic decision by him to at least not even take out the gold rocks, because he's probably gonna be forced if he does expand, which I don't think is going to happen, to the bottom right location, which is um, just not as good as a gold base. It's not baller. And here's the other thing. That was a very all-in-ish build. Um, at this point, he just lost. He took all that time to build those units and then lost them all. And now Idris' economy is going to be twice as good as his economy pretty soon here. Yeah. Idris' supply is way ahead at 163 to 121. This is just not a good position for Ensnare. You know, Ensnare's build was interesting, but he did not end up getting medevacs early. So, um, Terran has to be very, very sure of himself every time he actually stims and attacks. Um, yeah, that, that's just one of many factors in this game. That coupled with uh, such a slow third. Uh, oh, yeah. I just should be able to just overrun. He's just started his uh, hive at this point. Just making more drones, making more units. I just economy is going to get pretty out of hand pretty quickly here. See, he wants him to stim. See what he's doing here? This is good for the noobs to learn. He's getting close. Making the Terran feel like, uh, maybe I should just try to kill these Mutalisks. And this has opened up the, the gold base. I don't know if he's going to expand there right away, but he's definitely going to have the option to. The creep spread very neat on the map. Either with a frightening amount of Mutalisks. Yes, uh, indeed. 13 over here. And 21, he just, actually. He's actually just going to buy time. Excuse me, 21. The rear monitor's a little bit glary on my my angle. Um, now, he might want to attack the Terran while the planetary's making. 
he might want to just take a gold base, mm -hmm. play it safe. I, I, frankly, in this situation, I don't know what's actually better. I don't know if you know Artosis. I do, Aceless. Actually, oh, Mutalisk exactly. actually attacking the uh, bottom up location. Sorry, go oh, ahead. Very nice. Good harassment by Idra, just picking off whatever he possibly can. Looks like he wants to kill the Thor, but Marine's backing it up. He has to run away. But no, exactly what Idra do, is doing is perfect. He's ahead, he's trying to get more ahead. He is actually just taking bases, getting his macro up, teching up, getting upgrades. Oh, nice. He's doing everything right. Takes out a Siege Tank. That's going to mean it's one less chance for a Baneling to be shot down. That's right. Just whittle down with the Mutas because his economy is so many times better <laughs> than his opponents. You know, he's just got, he's got going up to five bases at this point. Until Hydra um, goes in and gets that gold base, there's going to be a moment for Instair to sort of catch up here economically, at least with the income, but... Yeah, well, Mules on gold patches. Yeah. Uh, really bringing good. a lot of minerals, but the thing is, Hydra has long-term income. Oh, nice. On. He's moving in here to the expansion. He's just going to try to get some SCVs. Getting chased down. Got to be careful. This is a very, uh, very serious decision he's making. Uh, he's going here now. He takes out this turret. But there are Marines here that can intercept. And um, I got to say, I don't know if this was the best move in the world. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I think it's fine because I think he's trying to free up a little bit of supply right now. You know, he's kind of sitting max. Oh, I didn't even see he's, he's getting a greater out, yeah. Spire. He's getting Infestor upgrades. Mutalisks aren't really the finishing unit unless you're like 100 times better than your opponent. Uh, realistically, you're going to want to eventually uh, harass with them so oh, much that you can get like some other units. You might. Oh, sorry. But, uh, oh, shh. Ah. All right, well, basically right now, Idra's getting every single tech. He's going to want to get some, perhaps, some Broodlords to go with his Mutas. Uh, some Infestors, of course, are amazing. He's got a ton of Mutas. Um, yeah, he has a ridiculous amount. Eventually, he can have so many that Terran basically can't leave anywhere. Yeah. Because he can just counter the main base and kill everything. Which looks like he's just going to start killing stuff. I think he may, he may go for Broodlords here, since he already has the air attack upgrade and all that jazz. Yeah. And all that hoo-ha. <laughs> all that hoo-ha. You know, as some might say. And note how many times he's forced the Terran to stem. He's forcing the Thors to be relocated. Yeah. There's a lot of different ways that the Zerk can counterattack. And it, as far as I can tell, listen, we're eventually going to see Broodlords here. Yeah, we definitely will. Look at all those siege shanks. They're dying to have brood lords shoot at them. Can't you tell? <laughs> They're asking for it. Yeah. Look at that. It's like a fractal of zerglings and banelings. <laughs> One brood lord. Looks like he's hang gliding. He's not. It's a dangerous unit. Hang gliding is dangerous too. Actually, so that is dangerous. And you know, the problem with facing off against Broodlords is they never run out of um, Broodleads to fire. And uh, it forces your siege tanks to, of course, end up hitting your own units. Oh, a drop oh, over here. Oh, a drop on the left-hand side of the map. Well, Muta's got it. Oh, Muta's got it. Not very exciting. Yep. Hydra taking the last base on the map as Ensnare takes his fourth. Now, he's continuing to make Broodlords. He just needs a handful of those. All right. Now, Ensnare has actually just maxed out. So this is probably what he was waiting for. Uh, he might wait just for his last couple upgrades to finish these. Plus three attack on his oh. greens and plus two attack on everything else. So it looks like that is what Snare is up to. Going to try to push with a max army. That's a good choice when you, you start to get behind. Get a max army, see if Zerg screws up attacking into it. And then suddenly you might be able to kill your army so cost efficiently that you can win the game. Now you got to be careful because if you screw up <laughs> once against a Terran maxed army, you're going to lose the game. That's right. Just like StarCraft 1, there's not that many much room for error. Yeah, because uh, are max army, Terran so army damage. if you don't attack into it right, it can kill you with minimal losses, and then it's going to be very hard to refill your supply enough to actually take it out. A few Marauders splitting up here. Smart move. He needs to do something to these expansions. You can see how apprehensive it's scenarios of pushing out. He knows he knows Idra's good, and basically, you know, Idra's better in the late game than in the early game. Yeah. If he makes one mistake. This is Idra's time. He has the map. He has creep everywhere. He has full oh, tech. Also, really note, I think, is the gold base mined out for the Terran? Uh, it's no, almost yet. there. It will be. The raid he's been mewling. Nice now, little split here. He's yeah. just trying to take out. Attacking several places at once. Is Idra just going to He's just gonna give that? Oh, meanwhile, in the center, he's edging out. Now, 
Hydra has a lot of money, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, he's got 5k, 2k right now. And uh, this is exactly how you want to play a Zerg. Notice how he's not trying to kill no matter how much he gets. What he wants to do, kill this army that Ensnare has, or at least as much of it as Zergly possible. <laughs> and then remax instantly, as quickly as you can, and then kill the army with your yeah. second group units. Decide based upon what units you kill and what units are left in his army, what to remax with. So that's exactly, exactly what I just gonna want to do. It's essentially a unit composition battle. It's like what, um, you know, sometimes in Protoss vs. Zerg and StarCraft 1, you'd end up with a situation where it's Ling Ultralisk. It's like, well, how do I stop that? Well, you're gonna end up losing your first army, but you switch into Corsair DT, yes. kill off their overlords, and it's a similar situation here. He's gonna look at, try to wipe out the Terran army, and then look at, okay, now what is he gonna try to remake? Well, I'm gonna counter that. I don't know if I don't know if uh, Idris should be. You know, right now, what he's trying he's... to do is bungle those. If he uh, can get a bungle off, then he can kill all the Vikings. It's a very expensive unit, but in snare, being I didn't even oh see so that. You're careful. completely right, Artosis. That's right. That's that's the way you do it with Broodlords. You mix in a few fungals and take out the Vikings, and suddenly the Broodlords just rampage all over everything if you can actually get them. Oh, oh nice we're committing. Fungal. Very nice fungal, sending in those corruptors. He just wants so badly to kill the Vikings. And, uh, you know, he's going to get almost all of them. Actually, we'll get every single one of them. That's what he wanted. That was nice. This is technical stuff. Stimmed Marines and Marauders. Trying to snipe out some bases. Going for Hydra's third. Hydra quick to follow up with that and denies that entirely. Now, uh-oh. And Snare, even though he's behind, you know, he's actually doing a pretty decent job right now. He does have 170 supply against Hydra's never-ending max. And he does have that fourth base, so that's very important. One important thing to note is that, assuming Ensnare wins this, and it looks like he should unless uh, Hydra makes a mistake. Um, oh no, excuse me, what I, what I meant is, uh, Ensnare, if Ensnare loses this, excuse me, um, uh, that means that both these guys are going to be one and one. Yeah, which means it could be replay. anybody's game. And that means, um, you know, they got to play really well after a game like this, which is going to take a lot of stamina. Mm. This is a very, very long true. game. I mean, this is... I've, I've been in games like this, and it is exhausting when you're done. That is so true, Tasteless. The snare just keeps pushing here and there and everywhere. Ultralist Cavern on the way, so he's going to remax with Ultras. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in case you guys are serious noobs, like serious noobs, and you don't know what we're talking about with the maxing, you can't continuously make units endlessly. Eventually it caps out. Each unit requires a certain amount of supply. Um, so, Hydra. you can't just have endless stuff. You have to eventually lose some of that. I think Hydra's ready, Tasteless. He's time. killed enough Vikings. His Broodlords are doing enough that he has Here decided it, it is comes. time to go. And that is a lot of Banelings, a lot of Ultras, a lot of Zergies, a lot of Mutas. So much of everything. Beautiful fungal on those Marines. The Marines being completely useless right now. And Snare will barely hold this off. But now Hydra has had so much money stocked up that he couldn't make any he's more units. He's making 17 Ultras. Hydra knows he's basically got this. Yeah, notice he you know, he just waited till he had so much money, and then he's remaxing completely on Ultralisks. That's going to make any of the Vikings completely useless. Thor's almost completely useless. Uh, Hydra's army is going to be absolutely insane. He's going to have pretty much the most Ultras you've ever seen. Yeah. And, and frankly, there's just not a whole lot you can do against... You know, Against as many ultras when you have a bunch of Thors and Vikings out, it's absolutely a sad story, as, as no, Tyler would say, Liquid Tyler. <laughs> it's a sad story. Now, Terran is trying to figure out, all right, if I do attack, where do I attack? He's judging that the upper left expansion might be the best location. As you can see his command center is floating there. That's the one that wasn't actually touched. 19 ultras tasteless right now. And a partridge and a pair of tree. Lynx coming out from behind so that they can't retreat. Never ending oh ultras coming in. Oh my god, and the carnage. Like, oh my. Oh my I'm god. I'm just showing us how to do it with Macro Zerg. Goodbye, and Snare, you are dead. Snare is D E D. Uh, and we're going to have to see. We don't know who's going to make it out. Hydra and Snare, I would say that uh, Snare would probably be Hydra's toughest opponent. So um, it was a tough game, tasteless on both sides. Yeah. Snare actually held on beautifully when Hydra took a big lead early on. And there it is, GG. Sick game. Ooh.
I have geek chills going yeah. down my spine. I'm and you, you might notice that Hydra sitting there, you might be thinking, wow, I bet he's so happy one. No! He's actually angry right now. <laughs> well, Hydra has got to be pretty happy. I know I'm happy being his teammate that he got through there. Well, we're going to have to see next Jinro against Czech. If Jinro wins, we'll see a rematch between Hydra and Ensnare to see who moves on into the top 16. Right. Uh, Very important match coming up. That game was so long. How many games have we just cast it now? That was that was one since the break, Tasis. All right, so we got one more game. game coming up here. How long was that game? I feel like that was maybe 40, 40 or 45 minutes. It was very long. It seemed to be pretty long. Map was almost mined. Yeah. Um, um, so we're going to uh, go to our next game here. It's yeah. going to be Czech Prime against Liquid Jinro. Yeah, and it's going to be on Jungle Basin, I believe. Uh, Ooh, I'm sure Liquid Jinro is happy about that. Yeah. Um, hopefully Czech has something surprising ready yeah. because he can't play the macro game as well as Jinro or Hydra. It's, it's simply true. His economy management is the weak part of his play. So he has to have something different, something yeah. else to kill Jinro with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know what that something is going to be. I have no idea, actually. Yeah. Jinro showed that his mid game is pretty solid. Yeah, no, like Jinro bamboo, is solid you know? everywhere, man. Yeah. <coughs> Say bamboo. Bamboo, it's a little bit flexible, but it's like it can't it's, break it. It can be pretty You know flexible. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's there you very go. true. But when I think of solid, I think of, you know, <laughs> harder wood. Well. That's just the you know, but you know that's where we have to draw the line. Or toes. I don't know what to tell you. Have to agree to disagree. Yeah. Um, so uh, we don't have um, check in the game yet, no. but we're going to introduce our players pretty soon. I'm sure they are pretty glad they got some time to rest. I'm sure Ensnare uh, and Idra are hoping this game's going to be pretty long because they would probably like some time to rest. Yeah. Both yeah. those guys were kind of hanging on for dear Smiled life. Smiled at my nerd man. He came in and oh, gave me a little eyebrow raise. He's like, <laughs> so. Um, man, talk about a serious game. That was probably one of the most epic, long, dramatic games in GSL history. That was actually a really great game because almost pretty much every Terran in the world would have died much sooner because they'd be like, oh, I'm yeah. so far behind. But and Snare was like, I am so far behind. Okay, careful now. That's what good Terran do is when they get behind. They're like, I'm going to turtle so hard. Yeah. Turtle hard, get that yeah. fourth base up. And, yeah. I mean, he did a good job. The thing is, Idra is just so far ahead. That is Idra's time to shine is in the Supreme League. Let's take a look at our players. Well, on the left, we have the shirt puller. It is Liquid Jinro. Tugging on those shirt sleeves. That's right. Over here on the right, we have Chick Prime. Both, uh, well, Liquid Jinro eliminating Blistering Sands and Chuck Prime eliminating Steps of War. Yep. No shocker that a Zerg eliminates Steps of War, that's for sure. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people don't like to play against Zergs on Blistering Sands. It can be pretty annoying yeah. to uh, actually deal with that. The back door when you get some of these aggressive all any Zergs. Yeah, certainly so. So uh, the map will be Jungle Basin. And this is a map Jinro is quite godly at. Uh, Check Prime, I cannot see him winning this. He has to come up with something new. We need to see something that's going to Well, if Hydra had a hard Jinro. time on it, if Hydra has a hard time on it, then Check Prime is going to have a very hard time. Yeah, well, uh, on it. the thing is, he has to change the game into something he's better with. Yeah. Because Hydra versus Jinro, they played what they're good at, which is the macro game, the longer game, and it went in Jinro's favor that time. Thing is, if Czech tries to play that game against Jinro, Jinro is going to eat Czech. He's going to be like, "Oh, like, you nom, actually, nom, 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 nom. yeah." Um, nom, 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 nom. Um, um, so I hope that Czech, you know, dictates this game and shows us the type of styles that he's better with. Yeah, some of these funkier mid-game. He cannot play standard because I don't think that works for Zerg in this map. Yeah. Countdown's Quite begun. Well. Get ready for the GSL brought to you by Sony Ericsson. Almost forgot to mention the sponsors, but I'm good at plugging stuff. You are. I am. Even um, your hair. He's bald. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the game has started. Um, get ready. Let's see who's going to make it through. 